Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand fundamental and technical forex and gold analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you, and if you're returning, welcome back. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your fellow trading colleagues, um, as it helps the YouTube algorithm get this video, um, you know, recognised and ranked uh, higher, and gets really the quality process uh, of how you know uh, we trade at trading. 180 with fundamentals as well as technicals out there to those that really uh, need it. So, uh, getting into uh, the week ahead and uh, zooming in, let's do the week ahead. So, earnings season, of course, we're not really concerned about that, but we are concerned about what central banks are doing. So, while central banks in the US and Canada will be deciding on monetary policies, so a big week this week, um, things have probably, uh, their monetary policy is probably been priced in but I guess uh, talking about Canada just quickly um, there's there's an expected surprise hike or there's a potential for a surprise hike so if they I think if they hike this week then um, you know that should be positive for the Canadian dollar elsewhere flash PMI surveys for the US UK eurozone Japan and Australia will be watched as well as fourth quarter GDP updates from US Germany France Spain South Korea and the Philippines um, so the US one will be definitely watched because it's really the first um, uh, fourth quarter reading so this really kind of sets the tone and the pace really for um for the u.s economy and whether it you know grew or kind of flatlined or even uh, um kind of shrank in the, the, the fourth quarter so uh, let's see any positive data will be positive for the dollar uh, other key indicators to follow include u.s pce prices um that's uh, inflation and um, Australia, New Zealand, fourth quarter inflation data. Yeah, it's definitely going to be watched as well. So inflation, um, you know, across the board. So let's get into the technicals and a bit more in-depth fundamentals and starting off as we always do on the dollar uh, index. And the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against the basket of currencies. Now, I've left uh, the analysis on, I guess, this week just to show you uh, guys, um, you know, what was happening uh, last week or what I was saying last week in my analysis and uh, what actually played out. Of course, this is not me uh, predicting as far as uh, me saying that this is going to happen. Um, the, uh, trading is just about likelihoods, right? What is the likelihood of something happening and whether, you know, we're buying at bargain prices or a potentially bargain price And I'd highlighted this area. Um, for those of you that know and are in the uh, group as a, as a CPR demand zone, it's a bit different from your daily demand zones. Um, not all demand zones are the same. And this is one that I'd highlighted the last um, analysis I did. You can go back to uh, last week's analysis to have a look at this as well, or look at the uh, um, the analysis I did last week anyway. Um, and you can see that price is pretty much accurately pinged off of that level. Um, I think there might have been, uh, yeah, the probably prices were... Um, uh, already on their way higher but generally you know the dollar we would I was looking to buy the dollar anyway and this is just a bit of confluence as to reasons uh, technical confluence as, as to the reason why I'm looking to buy the dollar but the fundamental reason um, is that the Fed has seen taking a step towards March rate hike so um, you know just a short paragraph is Jerome Powell and his fellow Federal Reserve policymakers are expected to signal their first interest rate hike since 2018 paving the way for a March move as the US central bank tries to extinguish red hot inflation so um, rate hikes are generally generally uh, positive for a currency and I use the word generally and typically um, in the long term in the medium to long term in the short term of course nobody knows what may happen so um, let's get rid of this analysis uh, so really what you know if you're looking to buy the dollar um from a daily demand zone perspective you're looking at you know some zones and this is probably going to be one of the zones that's confluence because the dollar index is just looking really more from a uh, from a confluence perspective so if prices come back into that demand zone and give some positive price action then what you're looking to do is try and look to Oh, this is not necessarily trading advice or you know financial advice, but what I would look to do, and I can only tell you what I'm doing is looking for confluence with you know dollar crosses like the dollar yen, dollar Swiss, right, to buy the dollar. So dollar at the moment um, has come up into a bit of a supply zone. We can see all this area, some quite a wide area of supply um, here. So uh, let's have a change of color. So 
that whole area there is, in, is a wide area of supply. Um, but again, why would we? Well, why would I look for you know supply zones to trade if I'm looking for buy trades? But if you are looking at that uh, that level to try and short the dollar, because of course anything can happen, um, and maybe some confluence, then you do ha also have in, a, in alignment with that a level of support and resistance. So support and resistance um, traders would be in, a, in and around here. So you could see prices pull back, but a pullback just basically means that you can buy the dollar for cheaper. That's the direction really that I'm looking to um, trade. So I'm, ignore, I'm personally ignoring any supply zones waiting for pullbacks. If prices go a bit higher, then that would be a demand zone that I'll be looking for as well, as that would turn into um, some demand right there. So uh, my directional bias is to the long side. If you are looking to short the dollar, you're probably looking at somewhere, I would say, around the highs. Yeah, as the dollar was expensive around here, expensive here as well. Right. So if it was expensive at these areas, then potentially it could be expensive here. Although the more times the level is touched, the weaker it becomes. So we could see prices go to the upside. But my bias is just looking for pullbacks on the dollar for more buying opportunities. Um, right. So uh, that's the dollar index looking at the uh, dollar yen. And uh, the dollar yen again from last week's um, analysis, you know, we did have this zone here and then prices actually uh, bounced off of that zone. Uh, we had uh, good uh, 157 pips to the upside. Um, my personal, uh, I do want to get involved in this and I'm looking to get involved in this. If prices can come down this week, so for example, going back to the dollar index, if prices start to come down like that, then you should see potentially the dollar come down. And I really like this uh, 113, 112, 50 area uh, as a as a nice uh, buy and uh, on our fundamental analysis spreadsheet um, uh, from from the, uh, uh, the traders group uh, private mentoring group that I uh, that I run um, the uh, the dollar yen has probably one of the biggest divergences right so we've got one versus eight um, a strength divergence of seven which is a which is a high divergence buying the dollar um, and selling the yen uh, for me so with that um, you know, my bias is definitely long trades. So just looking for really uh, uh, buy trades. So just let me just clear this last week's analysis up. So from a again a daily demand zone perspective, we've got this whole area here. Uh, demand. All right, and again, I think from a again support and resistance level within. So if you're breaking up that area there, there is a bit of an area here as well that looks like it could bounce off of there and we also did have some support and resistance in here which prices did obviously uh, bounce off of so if this doesn't hold and uh, the financial institutions want to buy more dollars for cheaper then I think these levels in here are going to be the areas to potentially look for um, for buying opportunities in the lead up to uh, a potential Fed rate hike if they are you know uh, if, they, if they are looking to uh, hike rates which I think the market is expecting them to so again just because prices are going lower um, you know it, it means that the uh, federal um, the financial institutions can buy the dollar for cheaper um, before obviously understanding that you know in the next you know year or so you know maybe the prices of the dollar should be typically somewhere around here and there have been forecasts for actually 120 uh, you know we were uh, looking in the uh, bank analysis in the group uh, from from certain banks and one bank was forecasting I think 120 so within uh, the near future say near future but within the next uh, maybe three to six months or so so um, this is looking like a buy a nice buy opportunity uh, if that if that target is met, uh, looking at the dollar Swiss, the dollar Swiss, um, I uh, missed out on this trade, but I'm looking again at buying. I think this is going to be a really nice area to look for buy trades. For those of you uh, who again are watching this but are in the group, um, there is a stop hunt around these lows potentially uh, coming if prices do pull back a bit more beyond that level or you're looking at a uh, buy trade in and around here 
right? From a strength divergence perspective, fundamental analysis spreadsheet, we've got um, the dollar, again, number one uh, being the strongest uh, and the uh, uh, the quote currency being number six, which is probably one of the weakest. So there's definitely a, a, a higher strength divergence there. So um, for me, again, my bias is to the long side. And again, just from a, um, a, an interest rate policy perspective, you know, buying the dollar uh, makes sense as well. So for me, I'm just looking for buy trades in and around this area, uh, maybe slightly just lower, or if prices can come down to this, um, somehow come down to this 95 uh, uh, level to 92 level, uh, then I think that's going to be absolute wonderful buying opportunities um, to get involved in that trade. Uh, moving on to the dollar CAD. And the dollar CAD, again, for me, um, fundamentally, um, looking at the spreadsheet, I think um, the dollar CAD is it hasn't got the best strength divergence uh, for me. It's three, one versus four. And, um, but I do think that, um, uh, I think the well actually I think I know that the market is is pricing in a uh, dollar CAD lower price. I think they're pricing in maybe 120 uh, 120s at some point this year, which is somewhere down here. I think that that is the possible target. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think the path of the resistance is to the low side. So you know many traders might be thinking, well, if they why the if your fundamental analysis spreadsheet is forecasting um, a higher dollar, then why are the banks forecasting a lower dollar? And it's really because of monetary policy. And again, it's something that I teach in my in my group. But you have to also understand that there are times where a four, right, a lower a lower um, uh, ranked uh, currency can actually uh, increase in strength, and uh, and uh, uh, a uh, uh, number one can actually decrease in strength um, and again it's relative but to the point of uh, monetary policy the, uh, the, the the Bank of Canada are actually seen as being more aggressive uh, in hiking rates than the uh, Federal Reserve so um, if anything probably looking at you know a pull back to that nice supply zone if you are looking to get involved in this as a short trade as a path of least resistance, um, it's basically you know the, the central bank who is the stronger out of the two, or who seem to be the stronger out of the two. Personally, I prefer divergences where you've got strong versus weak. But if you are looking to trade this, apparently the uh, the, the, the path of least resistance is to the downside. But again, this is a harder trade because you've got two stronger currencies fighting, um, uh, fighting it out and battling it out. So um, we're gonna redo this demand zone quickly. It's not. Actually, yeah, I can see why there is a demand zone there, decent demand zone. So if prices do come back down into this zone and you want to be a buyer of the US dollar, then that's where you want to look for buy trades. If you're looking for continuous sell trades on the Canadian dollar, um, then the 1.264 area is going to be the area to look for short trades. Um, the uh, pound dollar and the dollar we said again last week, we're looking at that area as potential short trades and look what happened pretty much you know prices came down it was due for a pullback anyway because there was really no pullback as prices were going higher um and it kind of went from you know how many pips it went from uh it was done a move of about four percent without any major pullback so you're going to have to have profit taking um etc but what we see now let me just uh i guess get rid of uh some of the uh, analysis from last week what you're seeing now is prices really kind of pull back into you know the uh, a deeper pullback, and especially as the uh, uh, the US dollar is looking to high rates, but so are actually the, the the UK. And we did get a bounce off of this level, so I did say that there was going to be potential uh, for a level the top of that demand zone to react, and it did. You know by um, how many pips so it bounced off of there, and probably went about 88 pips. Sorry, yeah, about 88 pips. So. Um, but obviously that level hasn't held, held. And the reason why fundamentally is because you probably had, obviously you did have um, the UK uh, retail shocker unlikely to throw the Bank of England off course. So December UK retail sales plunge and looks a lot like a post Black Friday pullback, even if Omicron has had some effect to still the outlook for the retail this year looks tricky as ongoing rotation back to services continues and disposable incomes are squeezed. And, um, um, 
there was uh, there was something I was meant to read, uh, but it's true with retail data. I did read something here. Um, mm, 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 what was it again? Uh, oh, I can't remember what I was, I was meant to. I was meant to read. There was there was something in here that that was actually quite positive. But the point being is that this is probably just seen as a as a bit of a blip, right? So it's not seen as a as a permanent trend. And um, and so again. Uh, the Bank of England are unlikely to be thrown, of course, of, of for hiking, right? So, I think uh, the negative sentiment around retail sales is probably going to pull push prices to the downside, especially if the the Fed are looking to hike rates at some point. Um, there is a bit of a level here from a support and resistance zone as well within that demand zone. You've also got zooming out. I think you've got a bit of a level here as well. So, um, if you are looking to buy the um, the pound versus the dollar again you've got two currencies that for, um, or buy yeah buy the sorry the pound versus the dollar um, you've got two currencies that are again quite strong so it's not necessarily the uh, the, the, the best you know pair to look for when it comes to uh, strength divergence uh, bringing that over and uh, it's basically one versus two so um, it's it's a harder trade for me uh, you do have some uh, some more supply in and around these zones All right, let me just bring that down a little bit and um, also as well you've got a, a, a supply zone that sits right on top of there so again, just in case you are looking to trade any pullbacks, then you're looking at that's going to be the first pullback to look for a short trade if you're buying the uh, the US dollar right there or right there. But again, not really a pair that I'm uh, I'm, I'm I'm really interested in. Uh, moving on to the euro dollar and the euro dollar again. Last week's uh, analysis, looking at short trades, many traders got in short in the group on here. Um, and again, the final targets are probably around the 112 area or 112.50s. Uh, this could go down to um, again. We already know that the um, that the uh, Federal Reserve are looking to high rates, which is generally positive. And uh, but what's going on in Europe? Where's the divergence? Um, ECB's uh, Matt Kluve says inflation slowing, no rate hike in 2022. So euro area inflation to stick above two percent throughout the year and vigilant on second round effects Irish central bankers says so even they, they think that inflation should slow in 2022 as supply chain blockages and energy prices recede uh, though it's likely to remain uh, at more than two percent in the euro area for the rest of the year according to european central bank governing council member gabriel uh, mcloof so from the perspective of the uh, euro dollar again just looking at the uh, the ranking we got euro dollar uh, strength divergence five the base currency is six which is weak um, and the quote currency is one so from that perspective <clears throat> again looking at uh, shorts uh, for me dollar being number one and that's not to say that prices are going to go down straight away like it doesn't you know no one knows what's going to happen in the short term but over the medium to long term where the longer term trend has been um driven by the fundamentals uh, this is just basically a pullback into hidden supply and then we had you know a bit of a sell-off so prices could pull back to this zone if it does then you can buy the dollar for a cheaper again in case you missed out on this right <clears throat> but ultimately the, the path the probabilities of you know the the, the or the likelihood of, of the trend continuing to the downside as, as traders and investors start to buy the dollar over the euro is to the downside so any pullbacks to supply are buying opportunities if you do want to be a buyer of the euro and there has been a talk of the euro potentially strengthening in fact really this whole area is going to be a bit of demand um, not pretty but that's just the way it is uh, but within that you've got an area of I think some support there and probably a little bit of support there as well but if you do want to be a buyer, um, those are the zones that you're looking for, you know, buy trades potentially. And also as well, if you're looking to take profit at some, you know, some areas, uh, these might be decent areas to, to take profit if you are uh, short in uh, or short from here. Um, moving on to the uh, Aussie dollar and the Aussie dollar again last week, we were looking at this area here, uh, but as potential shorts and you can see pretty much again what happened from a strength divergence perspective, you've got 
um, the uh, Aussie dollar, you know, it's saying this is pretty much a sell. Uh, the strength divergence of four, which is okay, and um, base currency, which is the uh, Australian dollar, is five versus one, five being weaker, um, and um, and uh, obviously the dollar being the strongest. So, from that perspective, you know, pretty much what we've seen uh, this week is, uh, you know, some short trades, um, you know, any any pullbacks into, you know, supply are, are really where you want to look for potential uh, buyers. The Australian dollar, though, is an interesting one because there are several banks. I think we looked at, um, I think it was HSBC, uh, were looking at, they were saying that the uh, Australian dollar could be a potential buy um, at some point this year, it depends on what the uh, Reserve Bank of Australia um, uh, do with their monetary policy. Um, and then there was, a, I can't remember another bank that said that, you know, to keep an eye on, on, on the Australian dollar. So again, um, you know, there was a pullback this week on the Thursday. That would have been a nice potential sell if you were looking at, you know, obviously uh, trading in the direction of uh, the fundamentals. So <clears throat> yeah, that was... Uh, where we were this week um, from a demand zone perspective and again understanding why you would want to buy the Australian dollar against the um, the US dollar when 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 you know there's pretty much no need really or there's no monetary policy um, supporting uh, a, a, an Australian buy at the moment um, I think the path of least resistance should be to the downside but if any pullbacks do happen then these areas are really the ones that you want to look for potential you know sell trades to buy the dollar especially as they're in that in that hiking cycle so um, that's where you know the path of least resistance should be um, uh, you know going forward um, until we do get the RBA um, uh, uh, statements as to what they're doing with monetary policy and also the data has to support that narrative and finally gold and gold um, you know making its way higher um, risk off sentiment really coming into play um, and this is due to the, the Russia and Ukraine uh, tensions and I did make a video uh, this week on the Russia Ukraine tensions regarding how I trade uh, risk off not specifically getting into what's happening in Russia or Ukraine, but just how to how how I approach risk off trading. But uh, you know, gold is starting to react now to risk off sentiment, and you can see pretty much you know where uh, if you are trading risk off, where you know you should be looking to potential for potential buyers. Now, if the um, if the risk off sentiment does dissipate, and it could, you know, uh, at any moment, you know, there could be uh, a bit of an agreement. Um, between Russia and Ukraine and the US, etc., and uh, and NATO and that, um, then and risk off dissipates, then you know you might see gold start to uh, fall, and especially as the US dollar is actually looking to hike rates um, as well. So um, that could be um, a play as well. So, uh, but for me, uh, I think if you're looking to probably sell gold. That would be a nice technical area. Looking for buys on gold, probably look for somewhere around these lows uh, around here, the 1760 area as the first area I would look for potential buyers. There is actually, in fact, a bit of an area here, a decent zone, probably in a lower time frame, where you've got a bit of a CPR zone right there. For those of you who know CPR right there, and then that would be a decent buy, I think. But um, but other than that, um, putting in the mixed picture, we are heading towards more of the recent, most recent expensive area for gold. That was definitely a bargain area for gold. So it um, uh, depends on really kind of risk sentiment um, uh, when it comes to gold and really what the dollar is doing as well. Anyways, guys, uh, that's it for this week. I uh, hope you enjoyed the analysis. And uh, don't forget to also check out the interviews I've done with the members in the Discord group, the mentoring um, uh, Discord group. Um, and where I go over, you know, their, their trading, their results and how I've turned, um, you know, their trading around. And uh, yeah, if you do want to become a member, unfortunately, we're closed for now, but we should be opening in uh, maybe mid spring. But I'll update the uh, the uh, the website then to check out Trading 180 for any kind of updates. But mid spring will be the next intake. Anyways, guys, take care and I will speak to you all soon.